What are you doing? Filming. Pictures of us? Yeah. Can I get your badge number? 0016. Cool. Is it shiny enough for you? It's very shiny. All sir. right. You need your driver's license, Mr. Fifth Amendment, right? You filming right now? I am. Oh, come. He's got the camera on. He's got the camera on me right now as we're talking. My route to this profession maybe wasn't what you'd consider traditional. Um, I didn't have a lot of role models in law enforcement, and some people get into this profession because you know, my dad did it, my cousin, my brother. Uh, I got into this because I, you know, when I started, I thought this was a really nice way to have an impact on our public. I think a lot of times people say um, to help people, and that gets really vague. Um, helping people. Sometimes people get our help and they don't want our help. Uh, but I think for us, or for, for, for me, it was to have an impact on people and hopefully a positive impact. I'm, I'm good at calming the waters, I think, and I'm okay with conflict. Sometimes you're going to have that, and I think I'm level-headed when it comes to, to talking to people about stuff. So that's why I, I got into it. went to college and Got my degree in Austin, Minnesota. I went to a small community college and got hired here part time in 1995. Okay. Um, what is your mission in policing? To eat as many donuts as I can, and drink as much coffee as I can. Uh, my mission in policing is to do the most good, and that's that's been an evolution over my going on a 20 year career now. Um, as I've gotten older, I've gotten mellower, and I think that's helped a lot. And it's not that I was really heavy-handed or anything like that. It was initially, I think, here's something that's wrong, I'm going to write it, and I don't really know or want to know why it's wrong. I'm just going to make this right. And as I've worked in small jurisdictions my whole career, um, you can't help but know your public and meet them, and so you kind of evolve, hopefully, in my opinion, into the kind of person that says, okay, I'm dealing with you on this, this topic or incident, and if we can figure out why this is, is going on and we can help correct some of that, I think it's better for everybody. Leave people better than we found them is kind of our mission. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's kind of a funny and a blessing how we've evolved. Uh, I think a lot of good things in life happen by accident. And we started a Facebook page in 2009. And we started it as kind of a way to share our small town with the people in our small town. And I'm kind of a smart aleck. I like to have some fun. So I wanted our page to be lighthearted. Um, I didn't want to say... Uh, we arrested so-and-so today for this. Um, I wanted to do things like, uh, how many squad cars do we have? Do people know this? Uh, who's our tallest officer? Who's our smallest officer? How many officers do we have? And it just kind of evolved. And I was hoping to get like 500 likes. That was kind of my, my goal. I thought if we could get 500 people to like our page for a town of 1,800 people, that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, one day I had some thoughts, and I just called it Thoughts from Chief Showlander, which is kind of weird because everyone just calls me Lee, but for some reason I just used that title that day. And I wrote my thoughts. And some people liked it. I thought, oh, well, that's kind of fun. So the next day I did some more thoughts. And when we started our Facebook page, um, we didn't, like, lock it down where people couldn't comment. So, because I wanted to hear from our public and what they thought of stuff. So... I left it open and you know, started writing more thoughts. And it kind of took off. And one night I wrote a thought and looked at it the next morning and my like, gosh, a ton of people had seen it. And it was, I think it was the one on advice for our youth or advice to kids. And it was kind of just real, what I thought would be like simple common sense, you know, get a job, work hard, things like this. And I think that one was viewed like 220,000 times which was really, really an honor, 
but it was really kind of scary at the same time that that many people would see something from a small town in Kenya. And then I thought, you know, the, the internet, social media, anything like that can be a blessing or a curse depending on how you use it. And I wanted it to be a blessing. I wanted it to do good things. And I thought, man, if we can reach that many people, um, I wonder what kind of good things we could do with it. And being a small town, we kind of know everybody. So I'll use your name a lot just because I don't want to use real people's names. So if I say, well, so Andrew comes in today and he has a concern. And I'm like, well, okay, Andrew, if you're okay with it, let me write about it because maybe we can help you. So you come in and say, um, you know, I'm looking for furniture, I'm looking for a job, vehicle repairs, whatever, okay. Um, and if I blog about it, and of course I ask people first, and I wouldn't use your name, I would change it. So I would say, um, okay, we're going to call you Mike for this. And then I would write about it, and you would see, you know, how this thing would grow. And we were able to help a lot of people do stuff. Well, then it kind of took off from there, and our likes started to increase, and people were sharing things, and it just kind of grew into this really nice network of people following us because they want to see the good, I think. And a lot of people have said, uh, you do things a lot differently than, than a lot of police departments. And I guess I've only worked for smaller agencies. I mean, I worked here, I worked for our local sheriff's office, excuse me, and then I came back here. Um, so I don't know maybe how things work in bigger cities and larger departments. I mean, I have friends that work there and I hear stuff, but we just do what works here. And it kind of took off. And then it got to be um, where we were kind of a go-to spot. And I'm real proud of that. I think you know, I don't call us police officers as much as I call us peace officers. And, you know, back in the day, that's what we were called, was peace officers. And I think we have a large part in that. I think while we have the enforcement end of what we do, and that's certainly important, um, I think there's a lot of things that we can do to help our public as well, as far as for trying to fill some needs, um, kind of showing our public that we are not just out here to catch you being bad. Um, I take great pride in catching you being good because I think a lot of us don't get that so much. So if I have a dealing with you and maybe you don't have a valid driver's license and we talk about it, maybe you get a ticket, maybe you don't, and then I help you get valid. I'm like, here, you know, I'll do some looking. Here's the numbers you need to call. Um, it looks like you have these fines to pay, whatever. And if we can help you on that, and then when you come in with your yellow piece of paper and go, look, I got valid again, I take great pride in that because then I think that we've worked together on something and you can know that you can drive around and not worry about, well, is he going to pull me over thinking I'm not valid now? Um, our goal, like I said, is to do the most good, to leave people better than we found them. And if I can help you with that, I think that's our role here. Now, when we're talking about this stuff today, I'm just telling you what kind of works for me in little tiny Kenyan of 1,800 people. I think, you know, somebody might see this and go, well, I work in a really large metro area and we don't have time for that. I mean, we have 50 calls a day, 100 calls a day. We're dealing with really serious stuff. Um, what works in Kenya wouldn't work here. And that may be the case. Again, I'm just talking about what I know working in my small town. But I know there's a lot of small towns and I think that we can all, in small towns, maybe go a little f above and beyond to help our public because we are a public service. And in a town the size of Kenya, which is 1,800 people, we don't have homeless shelters. We don't have, um, you know, YMCAs. We don't have uh, a lot of the things that larger cities have where people can go. So we are kind of your one-stop shop and it's led us to be creative in how we do things. So we do things here like um, we raise funds to help people um, get things that they need. Uh, so we don't, you know, we're not spending taxpayers' money. I couldn't go to my council and say, hey, I'd like to get this much money to take kids Christmas shopping. I mean, they might love to do it, but it's taxpayers' money. So um, when I was a young kid, um, I benefited from a Shops of Cops program. So I uh, thought, well, geez, when I became chief, I thought we would like to do that here. So um, we did a fundraiser. We sold t-shirts. And every year we come up with some sort of t-shirt that we sell for 20 bucks, and we take that money, 
and whatever is left over from paying for the shirts goes right into this account and we take kids shopping over the holidays and I write about it because I think it's important for people to see um, what we're trying to do here in helping our public and if it gives other agencies ideas what to do and they start you know maybe this could balloon into something huge where a lot of agencies do things like this so we started working on it and we wrote some money and we decided to shop um, locally and then we went to a larger um, like a, a box store and we did that for like a year maybe two and then I thought you know I'd rather just shop locally if I could just because um, it helps our local merchants they're big supporters of us and it, it's it's good to kind of get some of our kids into some of these stores because a lot of kids you know it's amazon.com or it's a, a big box store or whatever they don't go to the local hardware store the local jewelry store they don't know that we have some of these things because they don't see it so we thought well we're going to do it differently and now for the last few years we've just shopped locally so we get our kids that come in and people ask how we find the families that we help um, a lot of it comes just because we're small and we have interactions with people so I show up at your house for something I see you we visit and I realize that maybe you've got some needs um, sometimes our churches contact us and say hey we have a family in need uh, sometimes it's from our school you know we speak to school counselors social workers or teachers will contact us and because of our social media presence um, it's really easy to contact us so you might follow our Facebook page and you know that we try to help out people so you'll send me a message and go hey just so you know there's a family living down the street from me that is maybe having some concerns whatever and we'll just stop and visit with them and say hey we were told about this and we can have a network of people that help us and if we can help you that's cool and some people want it some people don't and I we don't force it on anybody of course and we don't um, we don't um, blab about it uh, but I like to talk about the things that we do because it, it helps. So we do the shopping program and it's grown and because of our presence on social media and I've had some TV appearances too, um, people will donate money. They'll just stop in and give us funds or they'll donate. Um, we have five bicycles that we just got in two days ago that um, a church had donated. So we have stuffed animals. We have um, our local hardware store in town um, was remodeling and they donated $3,100 of brand new toys. So in my secret bat cave, which is in a top secret location, I can't tell you about it because it's top secret, we have uh, $3,100 worth of brand new Christmas toys or toys for, for the holidays. And I'm honored that we can work that way together. I think it's really nice that a small town business would contact us and say, hey, we know you do these things and you could benefit from it. And so we wrote about it. Um, we did even a short little video about it. And I think it helps everybody. It shows our public that if you have a need, maybe we can help you. I think it's really important to highlight our local business and what they did to help us. I think that's wonderful that a, a small town hardware store would do that. Um, and then we just, we go shopping. And then we have people that wrap the gifts and the day before Christmas or a couple days before I dress as Santa and I have an officer drive me around in the squad and we deliver the stuff and we don't do it so much to get the kudos I mean it's nice everybody likes praise of course but we do it more to kind of show our public that we are way more than just the enforcers here I mean that is a small part of what we do but I'd rather you know that you can come to me if you have a need and if I can't help you maybe I can point you in the direction of, of someone who can and it, it's blessed us a lot um, we had a gentleman come in and I was coming back from training and City Hall called me and said hey there's a gentleman in town and, and he's homeless I said oh, okay and he'd like to speak to you I said all right so we spoke on the phone and I said well, I'm on my way back and I'll meet with you so um, he is like a lot of people and I, I wholeheartedly believe that a lot of us are two paychecks away from being like this this person and he said, I'm, I'm kind of stuck. I have a car and a car payment. And if I don't make my car payment, I can't get to work. If I don't get to work, I don't make money. can't make my car payment. I don't have enough money to pay for an apartment and my car. Okay. So I'm looking for, you know, your permission to sleep, like, in the parking lot. And, and is that okay? And I said, sure. Um, it was winter time. It's cold. So I think we gave him some money initially to help him out a little bit, 20 bucks or something. 
And then I went home and told my wife, I said, hey, you know, um, we've got this gentleman in town, and she said, invite him to stay with us. So I told him, and he's like, no, 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 no. And I said, well, I'm ordering you. I said, it's the police chief. I'm ordering you to move into my house. And we laughed about it. And he's, he's a great guy. He still lives here in town, and he moved in with us. So um, what I'd done initially was I wrote, hopefully, to find him a spot to stay. And nobody got back to us, so we invited him in. And then I wrote about it. You know, I asked him for his permission. He said, sure. And then um, it just kind of exploded. And one of our Facebook followers contacted um, Boyd Hoopert at Channel 11, which is a local station in Minnesota here. And he had, um, had contacted me and wanted to come down and do a story. And I thought, well, that's sure. You know, if it helps us help other people, that's cool. I, mean, I don't want the kudos so much for me. I think it's good to point out people, his name is Daryl, um, to, to help people like Daryl and to show the public that there are needs and this is not necessarily a, a big city thing. Um, this could be anywhere. So we said, okay. Um, so Boyd Hooper came down, they did the story and um, I'm gonna back up a little bit. So we got Daryl a place to live. Um, a lady followed us and said, hey, um, I have an apartment and you know this would be good. So then I wrote about it on the Facebook page and we were able to furnish his place. We had people that were giving us beds and couches and you know, tables. And yeah, the stuff didn't match and some of it was used, but when you're homeless, you're appreciative. And he was very appreciative and it worked out great. And I think it, it helps us in so many ways because we work well with our public that way. They, they know that they've had a hand in helping us do good things. Um, they've maybe gotten some items that they didn't have a use for into hands of people who can use them. And it shows our public that has a need that, you know, we're not going to turn you away. If we can help you, you certainly will. So it's just kind of grown. And we get um, requests. We get, you know, we'll do a, we do a garage of goodness in, in uh, December where we have a free garage sale. So that gets kind of crazy. If you want to see uh, a feeding frenzy, uh, people come in and they donate items. And then we set up what you would consider a garage sale and it's all free. And so we advertise it. And if you have a need, you can come in and get something out of that. So what we do, and again, we have um, volunteer police reserves that help, our officers help, my family helps, people from town help, and we get clothes, furniture, uh, knickknacks, you know, housewares and things like this. Um, we don't take couches, we don't take TVs. We did that the first couple years and people didn't want them. And it's an expense to get rid of those items. So um, we do it in what's called our old ambulance building and we open it up to the public. And you don't have to be just from here, you can be from anywhere. And people show up and they go through the items and it's all free. Um, we have a donation jar because some people want to donate, some people can't, whatever I understand. And if we get some money, we do. If we don't, we don't. And that money goes back into our programs. And then if we have items left over after this, uh, we take them to the local thrift store and donate them. Um, one of my sons works at a thrift store, um, so we donate items there. Um, we've given some stuff to the Epilepsy Foundation as well. And we try to find a home for everything so we're not being wasteful. And it, it's been a really nice program. And again, for some people to get, you know, um, plates, maybe some school clothes, a winter coat, things like this, it's really important. And if we can help them in that, I think that's kind of our role here. So uh, we've done that for the last few years. We do that um, normally over the Christmas, like beginning of December time. And it's worked out really, really well. And the first year we did it, I was a little concerned because we were gonna run it from like 12 to four. And we have like a 10 to 12, two people show up. And I thought, oh boy, we have a lot of stuff here and nobody's showing up. And it took off. People were calling friends and family and taking photos of stuff and sending it to people. And it got so busy, we had to open both of the big garage doors to get people in and out of there efficiently. And we advertise it too. So maybe you brought in something, a, a nice chair table and I'll take a photo of it and I'll say, hey, this is one of the items that's gonna be at our Garage of Goodness and it's free, um, you know, clothing and things like this. We kind of promote it to get people here and that's worked out really, really well. Um, we do, um, besides our Shop with Cops program, we do our Hearts Discretionary Fund 
and that has been a really interesting um, account for us. What had happened was a gal wrote me a letter and said, hey, I'm sending you a donation. Why, excuse me, she called me first and we visited, said, hey, I follow you on Facebook and I'm gonna send you a donation um, and I'd like you to use it as you see fit, you know. And so she sent me a, a donation and it was a generous one. And she said, you know, you can use it for your heart's discretion. And I thought, we're gonna do our, my heart's discretionary fund. So we have an envelope in my office that has cash in it. And it, it's grown over the years. I mean, it gets down in some funds and then it grows again. And what happens is, um, I'll use you again. You stop in and say, hey, I have a need. And I'm like, okay, um, if you're okay about it, I'm gonna help you with this need from this fund. But if it's okay with you, I'd like to write about it. And again, I won't use your name. But I'd like to write about it because that's how this fund gets replenished. And you're saying, yep, that's fine. So I write and say, um, we had a gentleman come in today that had a need for maybe a vehicle repair, um, to pay a bill, you know, whatever. And we helped him for our arts discretionary fund. And then people will message us on Facebook or they'll call or email or something or text message me and say, hey, that's really cool. I'd like to donate to that. And we get it and it sits in our desk drawer here and if people come in we help them with it um, people will just come in off the street and give us money as well which is beautiful and I put it right in there and all I ask the officers to do is if you get somebody funds out of that just write their name if that's okay and how much money you gave them you know so that way I can kind of have some idea of where things go and we have done things with that fund um, gosh we help a young couple uh, put new tires on their car because it was very unsafe and we had an oil change. Um, gosh, what else have we done with that fund? Vehicle repairs. Um, we helped a homeless person get some uh, some money uh, to buy some food and so forth. Um, we had a person that we gave them uh, gas money to take uh, their son to the hospital. Um, we helped some people that were, um, were going through, through dumpsters in town. Uh, we saw them one night, you know, again, we're a small town, and to see people going through a dumpster is not what you would see normally. So um, I saw that pulled up, um, visited with them a little bit, and what's going on, and they were down down on their, uh, their luck. So I said, well, you know, you can certainly do this, it's fine, but if you need something, why don't you stop into the office, I'll, I'll help you. So they came in, and we gave them some gas money, some food money, and we also get gift certificates you know, a lot of those come in too so we just keep them in this envelope and we use that as well and we get gift certificates for some of the local gas stations um, the grocery store in town and it's it's our way of helping our public hopefully have a good interaction with us because we know there are times where the interactions aren't so positive and we want to be approachable we want people to not be afraid of us we want people to know that they can come in if they have a concern and we will of course not judge them we can help them we will and it's worked out really really well and it's led to other things so the the shops with cops and the you know the talking about that and the selling of the shirts and the donations that come in have been great and that's led to us helping our public with the grudge of goodness and then the hearts discretionary fund and uh, we've even done a, a saint vincent fund for our local vet clinic and what happened there was we had an animal come in we do um animal rescue in town so if somebody has a, a found dog a cat they come here and then it's a small town i kind of know whose dogs are whose and whose cats are whose so um an officer i was out of town an officer contacted me and said hey this dog came in and it looks sick well, okay so we took it to the vet clinic um, and it was very, very sick. Well, it's going to cost a lot of money, and I just assumed not to see an animal put down if it can be saved, and we didn't know whose dog this was. It had no tags, no, no microchip, nothing like that. So I wrote about it on the Facebook page, and people love animals. And we had a, a party that said, um, they contacted us and said, I will pay to fix this animal's health concerns. And it had a really bad abscess that was causing its muscles to atrophy. So it looked like it had a big dent in its head. And we come, okay. And funds kept coming in. So we set up an account at the vet clinic 
So when we get an animal in, if it needs to be vetted, um, we can help cover those costs because sometimes we have to help adopt these animals out. So if an animal comes in here, a dog or cat, and maybe it needs shots, it has some health concerns to get it you know, altered, whatever, um, we'll take money out of that account to do that. The vet clinic has been wonderful at helping us you know, keep the cost down and so forth. And then I'll write about it on the Facebook page. And you might see it and say, you know, geez, I'm kind of looking for a, a dog or a cat. And, you know, uh, we don't um, ask much for the animal. I say, if you can donate towards it or whatever, that's fine. And people do. So we'll get money. And if you pay for an animal that way, that money goes right back to our vet clinic to offset that. Um, we get food donated, collars, all kinds of stuff. Um, we work a lot with Safe Sanctuary out of Faribault. And Patty and her staff have been amazing at helping us kind of get this going for our own animal impound and things. And it's reaching out to people. And it's, it's I think, very positive for us to call people and say, hey, we don't know how to do this. Um, can you help us? Because I think sometimes people forget that we're human too and we don't have all the answers. And I'm, I've never been too proud to reach out to somebody and say, I'd like to know a better way to do this. And if you have a better way to do it, that would be great. And it gives us both ownership in it. Um, we're like any other town. We have our people that have good days and bad days, good choices, bad choices. And we will deal with, with our, our public the best we can. Um, again, being a really small town, uh, if we can help you so these choices, poor choices don't happen again, I would rather do that. So we're like any other city. Um, I'm a, a working chief, and what I mean by that, I'm not slighting other chiefs, but I'm a patrolling chief. We're a very small town, so during the day, I'm your patrolman. Um, but I also have the administrative functions as any other chief would do. So if you have a, a call for service, you call, I show up. And sometimes it's documenting reports, sending things to our attorney's office. So you um, have some sort of conflict and it's something where maybe it's not ticket worthy at this point, I need more, more information, I would send a report to our attorney and we handle it that way. Um, but being so small and kind of knowing everybody, it's really easy for me to follow up on stuff. Um, we deal with a lot of people that have um, you know, mental health concerns, they've had just a bad run of luck, uh, people that have chemical dependency issues, and if we can help you solve some of those issues so that we're not coming back again and again, I think that's better for everybody. So we handle crimes just like anybody else would. I would hope so. We do get phone calls from time to time from other agencies that'll say, hey, um, we're looking at starting a Facebook page and I want to visit with you about how you do yours. Um, how do you administrate it? Um, do you pull posts? You know, How do you handle some of the negativity that happens? So I think it's been good that way. Um, you know, again, it's like, like anything else. You're going to have people that really like it, people that don't like it. Um, everyone's style can be different. I'm not saying that the way we do it is maybe necessarily the right way for everybody to do it, but it works for us. So um, we will get phone calls, we'll maybe um, help other areas with stuff. Um, maybe you work for a, a, a neighboring agency and you were like, hey, we've had a big rash of, um, of phone scams. Or we've had, could you put this picture on your Facebook page of this car because they're trying to identify who owns it and because you have a pretty large following and you're in the neighboring community that might help so we'll do things like that as well um one of the things i wanted to add is if you follow our facebook page or see what we do you'll note hopefully note that we don't put negative stuff on our facebook page um we don't post crimes on our facebook page per se now if we have a rash of car break-ins i'll write about that but I won't write about things like, um, last night we arrested somebody for domestic assault, or last night we arrested somebody for this, just because being so small, um, if I write about it, the public's going to know, and I'm concerned about your family, and especially if you have kids and so forth, so I don't write stuff like that just because I don't want to have somebody come up and go, hey, I saw on the Facebook page that 
so-and-so was arrested last night. Um, or they were trying to be vague about it, but they said they arrested somebody for drunk driving and, you know, it's a small town and it was your, your father or your husband or your coworker. And I don't think that's our role here. I mean, there's avenues for people to get that and that's, that's fine, but I'm very conscientious that way. And I think people are people, humans are gonna make mistakes. I know better or worse than anybody else. And I think publicly posting about your bad day doesn't help. I wholeheartedly agree with that. I think um, over the years, again, like I told you earlier, I've mellowed with age and wisdom, hopefully. And I don't think that as a, a peace officer, I am any better than anybody else. And you can ask any of our staff um, we don't act like we're any better than anybody else. Over the years, given the authority that we have and given the discretion that we have, for me anyways, weighs very heavily on my mind. Um, I realize that doing what I do, I can have um, a very large, hopefully positive, and sometimes negative impact on you and your family and your livelihood and so forth and our community and our agency. And I take that very, very seriously. Um, I am very conscientious about my role in our community and how I conduct myself. And I think it's very important that all officers realize that a lot of times when you're dealing with our public, you're seeing a glimpse of them, a small portion of them. And our rights should not interfere with your rights as far as for how we handle these calls. I think it's important for us to get along the best we can. We are a, a training department, really. I mean, we do, we've had some officers that have been here since I became chief in 2007. And we've got a couple part-timers that have been here a long time, um, but we are kind of a training department. And what I mean by that is you get hired as a Kenyan police officer. Um, we're a really small town. You might be here for a year or two, um, you know, get some training, get your feet wet, get a couple experiences under your belt. And then you say, oh, gosh, you know, I, I kind of want to get back towards my hometown, which is you know, Minneapolis and Paul, Faribault, or I really want to be a, a deputy sheriff or a trooper. So I think, um, one of the things that, that we do here to help other jurisdictions is I think I, I realize that I'm only going to have you here maybe for a short period of time and I hope that I can mentor you along the way to give you some of the skills and the traits so that when you're dealing with the public you try to look at the whole picture. Now I know it's different being in a town of 1800 people versus being in a large metro area so um, it might not work as, as well, but I think if I can teach new officers stuff and they can take it to their, their new jurisdictions and, and implement some of these things, like um, when I come up, I'm not going to introduce myself as um, Chief Schiller at the Kenyan Police Department and you need to be quiet and listen to me. I'm gonna come up and go, hey, I'm Lee with the police department here and I wanna talk to you today because of this. I think if some of the officers that come here and start here and maybe move on, can do that same format where they're at and not come across um, maybe as authoritative or as stern, that might help. I think that's an important role for us here. Um, I've said this a lot, I think, you know, being a decent human being doesn't cost a dime. And if we can give you some skills along the way and help you realize that maybe there's other avenues that we can do to help this person that's important well, again this is a small town and we have the time to do this here but i think it's important for us to be able to to teach new officers and other jurisdictions when they leave that sometimes a little bit of kindness can go a real long way and if, if you know we don't have the resources here if i can point you in that direction i think i've done a good service for you Um, I think you need to try a few things and see what works first. My advice is don't be afraid to try things. Um, I think public safety 
police officers, peace officers, however you want to word it, need to realize that there's a whole um, part of our population that we don't deal with. Um, you know, depending on who you talk to, uh, we deal with 10% of the population, we deal with 5% of the population, whatever you want to call it. Um, I tell our officers and, and, and anyone I, I, I come in contact with that there's so much of our population that we don't deal with, and that's important to remember as we're out here. Um, but you still need to be able to be approached by them and help them out. So I think starting small, I think um, you know we're very open door here, and you know, you've been here for a little bit, and you see that we don't have bulletproof glass, we don't have buzzing in and out because we're a small town and people just kind of come and go. I think it's important, first of all, to be approachable. Um, I think when you're out in your car, it's okay to have the window down. It's okay to wave to people. It's okay to have stickers and coloring books in your car because it's important, like I said, to catch people being good. And I think if you can get out of the car on a daily basis and visit with people, I mean, I think it's, it's, a, it's amazing when you see videos or hear stories of an officer that got out and played catch with kids and so forth. And my goal is to show the public that that happens a lot. It's not a once a month thing, a once a year thing, or we're not just doing it now because some of the public's perception of, of public safety is so negative. So now we're going to go out there and schmooze you more than we ever had before. Um, I would like to see where people go, that happens all the time around here, and that's good. Um, Working with your community is so important, and I can't tell other jurisdictions that enough. Uh, we do a, a program here. Dairy Queen has been a huge help. We don't have a Dairy Queen in town, but Dairy Queen will do a program where if they catch you or if an officer catches you riding your bike or skateboard over the helmet, you can get a free ice cream from, from a Dairy Queen. Um, that's great, and we're very supportive of that. We don't have a Dairy Queen in town, so we use one of our local businesses. So I think that shows good working relationships, and it, again, I'm a big fan of catching people being good. Um, if you patrolled with me for any length of time, we would drive around and you would hopefully see people come up, because it does happen a lot where people will stop us and go, hey, um, I had this thing and you talked to me about it and it worked out, or cool. Our kids will come up and visit about school with us, and, and people know me here as Lee, and I think that's important for other jurisdictions too is for the public to know them as as a human being. If someone comes up to you and says, um, you're sergeant whoever, whatever, that's fine. But I also think it's important for people to know you as you. And again, being a small town, it's easily done. It is. I wanted to say, I know some people might think this is, is odd that somebody from um, Minnesota cop block would want to sit down and meet with with a police officer in a small town But I uh, I hope what happens here is we open up some lines of communication and again I don't think it's a perfect system. I think we've got good and bad everywhere, but I hope that this shows people that um, This is how things get done. It's not an us versus them me versus you it's people sitting down and having some good dialogue and realizing that sometimes you might not always be on the same page or you might disagree about stuff. It doesn't mean that you're right or I'm wrong. It means that it's okay to disagree at times. And I hope that us taking the time to visit will maybe lead to other um, cop block sites or other groups to sit down and visit with you know, law enforcement peace officers and, and kind of come to some common ground. We, we wholeheartedly support it. I ended up on YouTube, I'm going to be upset.